Hello, I'm Grant Wiley from Worthington Publishing, here to bring you another episode of Grant's Game Room. Today, we're going to be reviewing Combat Infantry from Columbia Games. But first, a little housekeeping. If you're enjoying these videos and would like to see more like this, please go below and click the subscribe button. Also, click the notification button, the little bell, and you'll be notified when I post new videos. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up as it increases YouTube support when you do this. Also, be sure to share it with your gaming friends. That way they can get in on the game reviews and news. Typically on Tuesday, we post game reviews. On Friday, I do game news from around the gaming world on Worthington Publishing as well as other game companies. Let's get into the game components here on Combat Infantry. You receive with Combat Infantry, the standard GMT box, game box with the uh, sleeve over it. If you've ever purchased a GMT game before, you'll recognize this. I really like the cover design uh, done by Richard Lushik. Uh, the game design is by Tom Daglish, the owner. Um, and really a nice looking box. You, on the back you get a picture with a little uh, historical summary as well as the contents of the box as well as a link to the website. Pull the sleeve off, open the game box, and inside the first thing you'll find are a 12-page set of game rules with index and terrain effects chart on the back. Uh, nice full-color uh, rules, plenty of explanations, I've already went through these and read these, on the combat units, which are blocks with labels applied. You get approximately, I think, 100... 32, 140 blocks there, about 132 wooden blocks, uh, 66 for each army, and then 10 or so marker blocks. Uh, great examples of everything, full color examples at the bottom, some sidebars over here talking about like the combat infantry badge, fog of war, what's, what's in this game that isn't in other games, and what's not in this game that's in other games. Um, if you're a tactical World War II gamer, squad leader, band of brothers, uh, awakening the bear, lock and load, Mark Walker's old school tactical, uh, there are a lot of differences between these games. Um, this game has, due to its blocks, if you've ever played a block war game before, a natural fog of war. You don't, your labels face you, they don't face your enemy. So your enemy doesn't know what you have and you don't know what your enemy has. Uh, this works pretty well. It even works well for solitaire gaming. If you're a solitaire war gamer, you just play each side to do the best of your ability. Um, the rules were very readable, very understandable. If you've played a Columbia war game before, it, it follows along that pattern without seeming forced into the uh, game style. Combat, squad level combat infantry is a little bit different uh, than a lot of games, and they use their, their basic system for everything from strategic to tactical. Grant and Tom have done a great job here of, of putting this together. It doesn't seem forced. Everything's got a natural flow. Um, with the combat units, you're in command, or your units are a battalion. Each side has 66 units, which is basically your battalion. And then you've got three... Uh, Platoon, uh, platoons, and then three company, uh, companies within each platoon, and then three rifle squads within each company. So it works out to like 51 rifle units, something like that. Um, and I, I, hopefully I didn't reverse that. Yeah, I did. I did reverse it. Um, company HQ has three platoons inside. Let's see. Infantry battalion composed of three rifle companies. Each company has three platoons. So you'll have like company A and then platoon one, two, and, and, and three uh, within that. So it's pretty cool how it works. You've also got tanks, airplanes, mortars, machine guns, uh, engineers, snipers, anti-tank, air support, artillery support. Um, all pretty well done. I, I really liked what I read. Uh, the scenario cards. You get six scenarios in this, and they're presented on uh, scenario cards, which I like, because then you can lay this out. It's got the 
turn record over here. It's got your uh, board layout here. Um, German, American, it tells you which units you get. Like in the, uh, scenario one, it's Hell's Beach, D-Day. Um, the U.S. are making their landing. The Germans deploy first and play first. The American companies are placed on board. And then it even tells you down here at the bottom how to uh, play it effectively if you want a little bit of a solitaire, not necessarily engine, but the best way to maybe play it solitaire. Gives you your victory conditions. This scenario is seven turns long. I'll go through gameplay here with you in a minute. Uh, this one's six. And this is Hell's Beach for, for the first. Take Carville, a, a location for the second. Uh, Bust in the Bacage, third. Moran counterattack, last stand, and five bridges. So it gives you a different a variety of um, situations there. Now what I've already done with mine is I've already labeled and bagged these. I, I like the colors. The Americans are green, a greenish label on a green block. And um, what I did is I put my markers and dice in a separate bag. Your markers are on a thin yellow piece of wood. And you've got things for blown bridges, tank wrecks, foxholes, barbed wire, uh, anything that's really a ground effect. Um, and what's really cool is you have engineer units in, in, in this that are, are assigned to your battalion HQ. And you can activate them to blow bridges, to remove wire, um, go through minefields, help take out minefields. Now, what I found handy for me was... I broke my units up into um, A, B, C, and then my, my uh, assets, uh, air power, armor, things like that. So four bags American, four bags German. I, I got to say, I love the Germans on the black blocks with the gray labels. Um, and I'm going to show you the units and, and the combat stuff here in a minute, but you get the... Uh, 66 Germans, 66 Americans. You get two game boards. They're geomorphic, so they can be laid out different ways. Each scenario uses one, but um, they're going to have additional scenarios coming out, and you can create your own pretty easy. Um, Nice-looking map boards, standard GMT woods. Uh, they depend more on hex side terrain for blocking line of sight and calculating movement. Um, it's not the terrain you're entering, it's the terrain you're cross, crossing, which I, I, when I was sitting there thinking about it, it makes a ton of sense how they did this. Um, game turns represent 10 to 30 minutes, depending on the amount of action. Game hexes represent 100 meters, and each strength point, there's four per block for American rifle squads, three per block for Germans, represent approximately three men. German squads were a little bit smaller, Averaging about nine to twelve, uh, nine men, whereas the Americans were a little more beefed up, with um, typically twelve men per per rifle squad. Um, but the boards, two boards, are, are look very good. If you come up with additional scenarios, you can oh, don't drop the board. You can link the boards up, hiding my beautiful face here. Um, but you can see how the boards can be joined in different configurations. Uh, certain ways to uh, to allow the game to be played. This is a nice long board here if you wanted to do both. Um, what I thought was really cool by Columbia 2 was, let me read the rule here, uh, talking about scenarios and they give you values on, on maybe how to lay these out if you wanted to do your own scenarios. And I'm going to read directly from the rule here. Uh, Scenario, the game contains six scenarios for American and German firefights in the Normandy campaign. They're inspired by history, but do not pretend to cover a specific firefight. Scenarios have variable force assignments for higher replay values. Additional scenarios will be available with expansion packs. Players are encouraged to develop and submit scenarios for publication. Contributors will be rewarded with gaming dollars. So, um, you submit your scenarios to Columbia if they use them for future expansion packs or maybe just throw out on their website. Um, they'll reward you with game dollars, which is discounts or, or money you can put towards future games. Um, I believe they're playing on an East Front expansion and some other expansions, I'm sure, with this. Um, let's get into the game um, 
gameplay and the rules and I'll give you a little bit after that my thoughts on the system and what I think it uh, what it does well so with that I'm gonna come around to the other side of the camera set up a scenario and show you that okay I'm gonna start out by showing you a platoon HQ here and your company HQs pretty much look the same so this this platoon HQ is company A first platoon movement of five firepower of two that means you roll a ten-sided dice and it hits on a one or two depending on terrain his range is one his morale is six and PHQ stands for platoon HQ so that's a platoon HQ morale of six firepower of two range of one movement of five a company first platoon now this is his rifle squad from that platoon. Let's see if I can get this in here. It's focusing on my hands, not the block. There you go. Now, lower left corner, it's a rifle squad becoming belonging to the first platoon A company. It is a rifle squad, as denoted over here on the left. It has a morale of five. Now you use its morale if you're check, doing a morale check and it's not with a platoon or a company HQ. If the platoon or company HQ is there, you do a morale check and use the company HQ or platoon HQ's morale. Firepower of three. That means it hits on a one, two, or three. Range of two. The red two below the firepower. And a speed of movement factor of five. As the unit takes hits, it is rotated from three to two to one and then eliminated. Units can be rallied for a command and I'll go through the sequence of play here in a minute. Um, but it can go from a two to a three or from a one to a two to a three. Um, you get a nice looking uh, German unit there in the middle, you know, a little icon. Um, and I'll go through a little bit of gameplay. You've got mortar units that have a range of Six, you got to have a line of sight to unit, and I'll go through some of that. But the important things are these numbers, and I was doing the setup, and I just wanted to show you what the typical um, company looked like. And there's the company HQ at the top, okay, right there. Platoon assets, that's a MG42 there to its right, right there. MG42 or uh, MG42. You can see its firepower is five, range of four. So the firepower is definitely higher on the machine gun. Um, mortar with a range of six, firepower of five, and they drop in fire, so they uh, they get some negate some terrain benefits. And then a Panzer Shrek. And I'm going to show you some cool stuff with the armor. I was impressed as heck with the uh, the armor. The two the uh and, and like the three here on the infantry squad represent um how many dice you roll in combat so this rifle squad here would roll three dice at f3 so he would hit on a one two or three so if you rolled a, a one a two and a five you'd score two hits on an opposing rifle company let me zoom out a little bit so there is uh Platoon A three or Platoon three in Company A, Platoon two in Company A, and I've got the piece over here in my hand for uh, the Platoon HQ and one of the rifle squads. So you can see how it, it sets up. Uh, terrain limits how many units can be stacked in certain hexes. Pretty standard, I think, um, for games. I, I I I like the boards here. Nice and simple, and I'm going to set this one up, and then we'll jump back around. Okay, I've kind of zoomed in on a micro battle here within the uh, game to illustrate some features. These are your platoon HQs. Again, that's the third uh, platoon of Company A, and around him, within his one hex range, are some of his rifle squad units, and we'll assume the third rifle squad is somewhere else, but here's two infantry units and a Panzer Shrek unit. Now battalion HQ or platoon HQs can command their rifle squads within their own squad, uh, platoon plus any one 
battalion weapon. And, and this Panzer uh, Shrek here represents a pans uh, battalion weapon. You can stack two in a uh, town, which is represented there. You can stack three in clear beach. Now here I have a Stuart tank. Uh, tanks have a little different thing. If you notice that red two there, or the yellow two in the red circle, that's uh, its armor defense value. Now what's cool is, in fire combat, that is its defense. So if this rifle squad, F2, wanted to fire on this tank, you would take the defense value of the tank, subtract it from the firepower. If you have a positive number, you can fire. If you don't, you can't. Two minus two, a zero. You can't hit him. However, change up, fire with the Panzer Shrek, F6, take away the two, you have an F4. Sorry about that, had to change battery. So, the F6 minus the F, or the two, means that he's now an F4. You would roll two dice, scoring a, a hit on the Stuart tank on a one through four. Um, firepower is pretty standard like that. So let's walk through a brief turn here. And what I'm gonna do is in this hex, I have the American um, second platoon of B Company, along with two of his rifle squads. And we have a Stuart tank here. Um, which we've, um, which we're going to just assign to the, um, to the, um, platoon since they're adjacent. Sorry about that. Now, um, it's my turn. Now, in a game turn, it's typically there's, each game turn is divided into eight player turns, four per player. The first player will activate a, a headquarters. So if I had four headquarters on the board, each one would be activated during the turn. Each platoon HQ, as in here, can activate their rifle squads plus uh, any battalion weapons adjacent to them, such as a tank, etc. Um, company HQ can activate any three units anywhere uh, or, or uh, weapons anywhere on the map. Okay, so they don't have to be adjacent. They can be anywhere on the map and company HQs signified by a C, not a P, that has a PHQ here. A CHQ can activate any three units anywhere. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, go through the different commands you can do with the HQ. Each unit that is in command in other words, within the command range of this, so one here and one here from my, pl my platoon HQs. If any of your rifle squads are out of command range, say this guy was here more than one away, I would roll against his morale, which is four, and on a one through four, that piece could activate. Five or six, he's laid face down, he's out of command. That means he can't try and be activated later or activated by the company HQ, just means for this com HQ's activation, he can't. So we're going to act... Um, we're not going to do it yet. Each unit can attempt to rally, and you check the against the commanding HQ's morale. So I would use a six here. If this guy had been dinged down to a two, a one through six, I can rally him to a uh, back up to a three. But that's the only thing he can do that turn. Um, you can fire with a unit. Again, modified by target and terrain. Uh, you can do special actions such as dig a foxhole, blow a bridge. Lay smoke, you can move, and after any of those, the HQ can uh, take action. Now, what happens is there's no reaction fire in this game, and I, I am very grateful for that because I hate reaction fire, even though we've got it in Band of Brothers, and every tactical game, other tactical game in the world has it. I just, I hate that it breaks up the flow of a game, it feels like to me. But, um, if you move into an enemy-occupied hex, you fight three rounds of uh, combat against any units in there. So if this, no, we're not going to send a panzer shot, but if this one rifle squad wanted to pull a suicide and pull in there, he would fight three rounds of basic fire combat against these three units. Each They would each roll 
Um, and I'll go through that in a sec. So let's, let's just get into a little play here. We'll do a quick move and uh, do that. So this German platoon, we'll say he's act, activated. So he is the active command. Um, and what we're going to do is normally you have to stop if you move in uh, adjacent to an enemy unit. Or, or, um, but because I already have units here, it kind of frees this guy. This guy could go one, two. He's moving along road. And then he's going to cross down slope, um, which won't, af won't affect him going... Well, it would if he was going up, but he's not going down. So it'd be three, four into there. So he's, he's going to do with the suicide move. However, well... Let's back this up. We're going to fire with the Panzer Shrek on the tank. So let's roll through that real quick. And I'm just going to place this like this while I grab some dice. You can listen to the sound of my beautiful voice while I grab four dice. And the Panzer Shrek is going to roll. Uh, he has line of sight because they are adjacent. Always clear line of sight adjacent. Um, and he would roll two dice. Uh, beach has no terrain modifier. Um, defense is one. So he rolls two dice at F4 because six minus two is four. So we roll two dice and we roll a four and an eight. This Stuart just took a hit. Okay. Um, the next, the rifle squad here is going to fire into the hex here, the beach hex. And he has clear line of sight. Again, um, it doesn't block because we are adjacent. And he rolls F2. So he will roll three dice and hit on ones and twos. Now, I rolled one, two. In the case here, when three units are in a hex, you apply the hit to the largest unit in the hex. So we'll just apply it to one of the fours, reducing him to four to three. Now, I can move this unit. Since he's still in range, he can move. And he will go one, two. We're not going to do a suicide thing. We're going to bring him in to assist this rifle squad. And that is that platoon's move. Now, you can lay the pieces face down. Um, I'd rather just lay the HQ down, and I'll, I'll know these guys have moved. Now, we're going to go with this American company. And what we're going to do here is we have a choice. We're going to activate these three units, and he will fire. He's an F4. He is uh, firing one, his F4, so he rolls one die and hits on a one through four. However, the terrain effects chart says D2, which what and what that means is is that it takes two hits to uh, knock down a level on these units. So we'll roll one and we roll a three F4. That is a half hit on one of these units. Now you're limited into how many units can fire through a hex side if you're adjacent. And I am firing up a slope, and that limits it to the other terrain in the hex. We're firing um, slope, and that is clear. So I can fire two units. So these two rifle units here are going to fire, and they're both F2, so I get to fire seven dice at F2. And again, they're in a town, so I've got to score Two hits for each. So there's one. So with the other half hit, that's a full hit, finally. And now I have three more dice at F2. And there's another uh, two hits. Because I believe, and you know what? I, I didn't read this, but I believe the zero is a zero. So I think that's one more hit. And if not, it's a half hit, irregardless. Guys... That's pretty much the basics of it. You're activating, moving, firing, fighting, combat. Um, I'm going to come around and give you some final thoughts on this. But the 
the basics are, are there. That, that's the basics of the system. Um, again, pretty cool pieces, pretty cool look to them. Um, I'm going to try and give this a play sometime this week and maybe record another full session of me playing. But I wanted to do a quick 15-20 minute review and give you my thoughts. So hang on, I'm going to come around. Okay, I've given you a, a show of the components, uh, a little bit of gameplay. Um, everything's pretty tight in the rules. I will tell you, Grant and Tom um, have been doing this for 35, 40 years now. You know, I think it started with Quebec 1759, I believe was their first game. They have a standard system that they use. They know it well and they do it well. This is an excellent game. Um, it is not as heavy as Squad Leader. It's not as heavy as Band of Brothers or Awakening the Bear or Lock and Load. Um, it does what it does well. It, it's a um, basic squad level combat game. If you want to get into a quick down and dirty fight and be commanding your companies and making decisions at that level, this is it. Um, this is a very, very, very good game. And if you haven't bought it on Kickstarter, you need to go out and get it. Give yourself a Christmas present now. Order it. Um, do some scenarios. Get you some gaming dollars. That way you can be in for the next run on the East Front, I believe. If, if I know gamers, they're going to want to do East Front next. Um, and you'll have the system down. You can start putting these boards together, lay them out in different ways. Uh, I believe... Um, Tom, or, uh, Tom did an interview on the Player's Aid at Gen Con. You can find it on YouTube. And if I can find the link for it, I'll, I'll link it up here in the corner. Uh, or in one of the corners. You, you'll see it. Um, and he talked about how they were talking about doing future expansions. Guys, this is a good game. I love the... What I really like is the firepower and how simple they made combat. There is no facing to worry about. There is no reaction fire. Um, it's baked in certain things. And I love seeing baked into a game design. You don't have 50 million tanks running the battlefield. They could do a separate like Battle of Kursk uh, game edition with this. It would work well. But because of the firepower, because of the hex side limits, um, because of the uh, how you're tied to your headquarters, and it, it runs up a chain of command, um, it creates, I, I feel, a realistic um, squad level game, even without the reaction, fire, and facing. Um, I, I don't know why so many people get their head wrapped around facing on a squad level game when in one minute, and trust me, I've, I've shot plenty of guns in my lifetime. You can spin around and face to your rear and turn around and, and you know, be blasted in, in all kinds of directions in one minute. I could put down a field of fire that, you know, too many people aren't going to get through. Um, this game does it well. It's probably, it's a squad level game, but it's not micromanagement squad level. You're, you're, you're commanding squads. It feels different than Band of Brothers. It feels different than the other games I've mentioned. Um, so, I, you know, I'm going to put squad level up, the squad leader, squad level. Squad Leader up here with uh, probably Lock and Load Publishing's um, title. And below that in complexity and, and, and maybe a little bit depth, although I, I still think they have equal depth, is Band of Brothers, uh, Awakening the Bear, Old School Tactical. And then this complexity-wise is, is below that, but it works well. I, I, I can't recommend any one of those over the other. If you like those, you will absolutely love this game. Get it. Um, Grant, Tom, my hat's off to you, man. You, you guys did a great job here. With that being said, go out today, play a game, teach a game, buy a game. I'd recommend this highly. But most of all, happy gaming. I'll see you Friday for game news. Um, shoot me an email if you want me to do uh, any special reviews or anything. Uh, but happy gaming, guys.